Welcome to the Weekly Bat. Welcome to the Weekly Bat for the week of July 17th to July 24th, 2020. Kicking off the week with a new partnership announcement. Brave and Code for Everyone partner to create a new way to support nonprofit organizations via Brave Rewards. Brave has partnered with Code for Everyone, an educational nonprofit organization in Japan. Our partnership introduces new forms of support for NPOs using the next generation Brave browser and the Brave Rewards ecosystem. Code for Everyone is a nonprofit organization in Japan with a mission to make Japan the country where all children can enjoy programming. Code for Everyone provides programming materials for schools, case studies of programming education for teachers, and holds various events. Coming up next, we have the next post in an installment of blog posts called What's Brave Done for My Privacy Lately? by Brave's research and development team. This is episode 5 and it is titled Grab Bag. In order to stay one step ahead of online trackers, Brave regularly releases new privacy features and improvements. This post discusses three recent changes in Brave that each help make the web a more privacy and person respecting platform. All of these are tweaks, subtle changes, or first steps of a new approach to a more private, more compatible web. Up next, we have news of an upcoming event, free webinar. Join Brave and Dentsu's free online event titled Future Proof Your Marketing, Advertising in a Cookieless World with Brendan Eich, Brave CEO, and other Brave team members. This will be taking place on July 29th, 2020. You're invited to join Amy from Dentsu and Brendan, Johnny, and Donnie from the Brave team for a virtual event on how ad agencies, in-house brand marketers, and publishers can prepare to shift their advertising strategies as privacy regulations like GDPR and CPPA become more important than ever. As consumers take more control of their digital privacy, our speakers will talk through tangible advertising solutions and provide key takeaways that marketers can immediately implement. You can register for the event for free via the link in the Weekly Bat blog post. Up next, we have an update on the TAP Network Sweepstakes. Enter TAP Network Sweepstakes using Bat and instantly win a limited edition Nintendo Switch Plus Animal Crossing New Horizons. This just in, Brave users with Uphold Verified wallets can now enter TAP Network sweepstakes to win a Nintendo Switch plus Animal Crossing New Horizons. This limited edition product is completely sold out online. Don't miss your chance to snag this awesome prize. Other sweepstakes offerings include digital gift cards for Walmart or Amazon, and there are more brands and prizes to come. To enter the sweepstakes, head over to the TAP sweepstakes page and choose the sweepstakes you want to enter. Enter as many times as you desire. It costs just 10 cents in bat per entry. Winners are chosen by TAP at random through a digital sweepstakes drawing system and will receive their digital gift card prize via email. If you haven't verified your Brave Rewards wallet, the TAP Marketplace provides a range of options for you to redeem your earned bat for gift cards, sweepstakes, and to support causes. This week in Sponsored Images. Spot Popeyes and Kudos ongoing sponsored images campaigns in the new tab page this week. Nexo, Crypto.com, eToro, BlockFi, and Bybit all return to the new tab page this week following the success of their recent campaigns. Finally, did you catch Brave's user survey image featuring a cute furry duo? And hey, who's that lurking in the back? Our growing list of new tab page sponsors includes Verizon, PayPal, Newegg, Western Digital, Chipotle, Khan Academy, Tezos, Upland, and more. Brave Creator Spotlight, in partnership with Everipedia. The first featured creator of the week is Gavin Anderson, who is an American software developer best known for his work in Bitcoin. Originally a developer of 3D graphics and virtual reality software, Gavin began developing products for the Bitcoin market back in 2010. By 2011, he was designated by Satoshi Nakamoto, the pseudonymous inventor of Bitcoin, as lead dev on Bitcoin Core, the reference implementation for Bitcoin client software. In 2012, he founded the Bitcoin Foundation to support and nurture the development of the Bitcoin currency. And by 2014, he left his software development role to concentrate on his work within the foundation. The next featured creator of the week is Cody Yount. Cody is a former YouTuber and internet personality who has since moved on to flipping phones full-time. 
He hasn't abandoned his loyal fans, though. Cody keeps them entertained with phone-flipping tutorials via his Twitter page and with regular updates on Instagram. You can find links to both featured creators' properties as well as their Everipedia articles in the weekly BAP blog post. Client Updates This week, the Desktop Nightly channel progressed to version 1.13.43, the Desktop Dev channel progressed to version 1.12.100, the Desktop Beta channel progressed to version 1.12.98, and the Android Release channel graduated to version 1.11.100. Stay ahead of bugs and benefit from all the latest updates and fixes by keeping your Brave Browser updated to the latest version at all times. To update your Brave Browser on desktop, go to brave colon double slash help. On mobile, if you don't receive updates automatically, you can manually update your Brave Browser app from the Play or iOS app stores. News you should know. This piece is borrowed from the Week in Ethereum News newsletter. The hashtag Twitter hack postmortem via my crypto blog on Medium. Hundreds of millions of users were exposed to crypto scam tweets from compromised Twitter accounts. What happened? Note, this is a high-level overview of the events that occurred. On July 15th, around 40, or possibly more, Twitter accounts with hundreds of millions of combined followers were compromised and began tweeting out forms of trust trading scams. These scams netted more than $100,000 in cryptocurrency, and the actions made waves throughout the internet. Up next, The Tatiana Show, episode 262, peeling back the layers with Isabella Baguros of The Tor Project. Josh and Tatiana are spending this episode of The Tatiana Show focused on privacy, and they welcome Isabella Baguros, executive director of The Tor Project, to explain why privacy on the internet is important. Isabella recounts how she first came to use the Tor browser and then began working for the Tor project, eventually becoming its executive director. She also, very simply, likens the layers of encryption applied when connected to Tor to the layers of an onion, hence the onion router. Previously, Tor users were able to use the browser to visit the web anonymously. The latest Tor project, the open source onion share, now allows users to offer and exchange content with the same encrypted protection. Isabella also addresses the term dark web and explains that there is no such thing. At least, not as it exists in the imaginations of people who are not familiar with how internet infrastructure works. What most people think of as the dark web is really just the unindexed web. What Tor offers is not a doorway to some secret part of the internet, but privacy, security, and a way to circumvent censorship across the entire public internet and the network of unindexed sites and onion servers. This is a must-hear episode for a concise explanation of how Tor works, why you need it, how far it has come in providing security and privacy, and where it goes from here. Remember, there is no dark web. There is only Tor. This next piece is from TechCrunch. Data from Dutch public broadcaster shows the value of ditching creepy ads. For anyone interested in the contested question of how much, quote, value, or, well, how little, publishers derive from the privacy-hostile practice of tracking web users to behaviorally target them with ads, pro-privacy browser Brave has published some interesting data, obtained, with permission, from the Netherlands public broadcaster NPO. The data shows the NPO grew ad revenue after ditching trackers to target ads in the first half of the year, and did so despite the coronavirus pandemic landing in March and dealing with a heavy blow to digital advertising globally, contributing, for example, to Twitter reporting Q2 ad revenues down nearly a quarter. Here's Brave's chief policy and industry relations officer, Johnny Ryan, who writes, NPO and its sales house, Stir, invested in contextual targeting and testing, and produced vast sales increases even with sites that do not appear to dominate their categories. This may be a tribute to Stir's ability to sell inventory across NPO's media group as a collective, but this benefit would have applied in 2019 and does not account for the revenue jump in 2020. A publisher does not therefore need to have market dominance to abandon third-party tracking and reproduce NPO's vast revenue increase. That's a wrap for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you would like to read the full stories whose headlines we cover on the podcast, be sure to read the accompanying Weekly Bat blog post. You can find that on batcommunity.org always, or if you're listening on YouTube, check the description box below the video for a link, 
And if you're listening on a podcast app or player, check the show notes. The issues like privacy, tracking, and allowing individuals to understand and control the code executing on their devices, the company's outsized role in shaping web standards becomes a real issue. News you should know. Our first News You Should Know piece is actually a podcast episode from The Tatiana Show, Healthcare and the Blockchain with Krissa McFarlane. First, a little bit about The Tatiana Show. The Tatiana Show podcast talks about politics, activism, blockchain, music, and how to combine them all to help the world. Tatiana Moroz, co-host Joshua Skigala, and special guests chat about all kinds of exciting topics from technology, the arts, and the Bitcoin revolution in a casual conversation that a layman can understand. The show tapes weekly and airs over several networks including Let's Talk Bitcoin, Liberty.me, LRN.fm, IPM Nation, and many more. And here's a little bit about the featured episode. Krissa McFarlane realized the world has a very big problem. The healthcare industry is slow to innovate and inefficient. Nothing in recent memory has made this more clear than the current COVID-19 pandemic. Global response to the coronavirus was, without a doubt, hampered by misinformation and slow communication and a lack of cooperation when it came to setting standards for gathering, recording, and sharing data. Patientory plans make a big dent in this problem. With a background in research, healthcare operations, and data management, McFarlane is dedicated to educating regulators and healthcare leaders about the urgent need for data management solutions across the entire healthcare industry, from pharmaceutical supply chain management to digital health and therapeutics, to telemed practices and drug and clinical trial data management. Krissa also offers some great advice to women and minorities looking to start their own company or to work in STEM, as well as ways to cope with encountering racism and sexism in professional settings. That's a wrap for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you would like to read the full stories whose headlines we cover on the podcast, be sure to read the accompanying Weekly Bat blog post. You can find that on batcommunity.org always. Or if you're listening on YouTube, check the description box below the video for a link. And if you're listening on a podcast app or player, check the show notes.